Well, hey guys, I just woke up doing my skincare routine, coming in with the Shimmer 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 from Kroger Budget Friendly Win. Last night, I finished up with this bad boy. I have to say, I rather enjoyed it, but I will not be repurchasing it because it was a little steep. At the current moment for my PM moisturizer, I have been using this good old youth firming apricot collagen, apricot collagen youth firming cream. This one's pretty good too. So I don't know. I need to use that one a bit more before I have a fully formed opinion, but so far so good. This week was chaotic per usual, but here we are Saturday. Comment below on if you deal with melasma on your upper lip. It's actually a common area for melasma to pop up, especially <clears throat> related to like um, hormonal medications or pregnancy. Recently I did a video, it should be up at this point, all about taking a pause from hydroquinone. Hydroquinone is like the gold standard topical for melasma, especially in combination with retinoid and a low potency steroid that's called the triple combination cream, Kligman's formula sold under the name of Triluma, um, but hydroquinone is, is great, but you can only, you know, using it long term poses a risk, some, some risks, and I talk about it in that video, so definitely check that one out. But, you know, as far as maintenance and things to use when you're not on hydroquinone, there are a lot of good topicals these days, topical pigment correctors that um, are really useful, like niacinamide. When it comes to melasma, it's not a one and done thing. It's, it's, it's like, you know, you kind of have to chip away at it and, and go with maintenance treatments. And sun protection is essential. Sun aggregates melasma 100%, um, including sun that comes through the window. Like if you're sitting by a window, the UVA rays can really aggravate it and the visible light. And, and also the infrared radiation heat because there's that vascular component to melasma. I have a video all about common melasma mistakes that people make that worsen melasma. So I highly recommend watching that if you're, if you're trying to deal with melasma. Then of course you have laser treatments. Peels can be a great option. Anyway y'all, I need to make my coffee otherwise you know, you know, y'all, you, those of you who have been here for a while, you know that that is really the, the key to, 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 to maintaining this shiny, shiny bond. Speaking of shiny, I love this sunscreen. I don't think it's too shiny. Some of you commented that you find it looks too shiny. Coffee is a incubating, but y'all know how much I love my peak tea crystals. Like I love them because I don't have to deal with a bag. But I recently saw this on Amazon. I used to drink these red rose teas all the time and I kind of forgot about them. They're really good. So I saw this new flavor, hot chocolate and marshmallow. I had to try it. If you've never tried these before, they're sweetened with stevia, like in the tea bag. So this one's actually pretty good. It does kind of taste like hot chocolate, but it does have um, a strong undertone of chamomile tea. It's just a chamomile tea with roasted chicory, cocoa shell, roasted carob, chamomile, natural flavor, cinnamon, stevia, and stevia. Um, it's pretty good. It, it actually kind of tastes like hot chocolate. I don't get much of a marshmallow. They have a um, lemon one that's really good and a blueberry muffin that's divine. Yeah, those are really good. That was the timer telling me it's time to plunge the coffee. I haven't tried that new coffee that I purchased last weekend at Sprouts yet. Um, but I'm about finished with this particular bag of Raven's Brew, so I look forward to trying that next. So I wanted to show you guys this too. I bought this on iHerb. This is a new, new thing on iHerb. These gourmet extracts, extract paste, lavender. And I thought this would be really good for baking. I did finish that flavorant that I purchased at, um, Michael's the other weekend. And it was okay. I purchased a cookie butter flavoring to put in like smoothies and stuff. And it did taste like those um, Lotus Biscoff cookies, but it wasn't very strong. This is like a paste though that you can bake with. 
to make lavender ice cream, lavender tea cake. I had to try this. And I have the Italian Volcano Lemon uh, Concentrate from Costco. Highly recommend that, it's really good. Uh, if you like to make lemonades and stuff. So I thought it'd be fun to make, uh, see if I could make like a lavender lemon smoothie slush for the holiday, for the holidays, for the summer months. I thought that might be good, we'll see. So I'm sitting here doing some research on the computer about uh, dietary supplements for nails. This is something people commonly ask about. Uh, are there any supplements that are good for nails? And honestly, the research across the board on different dietary supplements for nails is pretty limited. Um, like, you know, it's really popular to take biotin. And I've talked about the issues with biotin on here before. It's, it's commonly touted for hair growth. The research on biotin for hair growth is not convincing at all. Um, unless you are biotin deficient, taking biotin for hair growth, I've said this ad nauseum on here, but if you're new, um, it, it, it really does not, the, the research doesn't support doing that. And biotin supplements are not without harm. They can interfere with uh, lab work that might be ordered uh, at your doctor's office. While biotin appears to be otherwise safe, for the majority of people, um, it's a safe supplement. I will say there is a small amount of research suggesting that it is helpful for brittle nails. There's a lot of variability though in these studies. Like for example, um, one of these looked at two and a half milligrams of biotin. Another study though gave people, that showed improvement in nail brittleness, they gave people a supplement that had 45 micrograms of biotin, so much lower. But the supplement also had magnesium, zinc, copper, so it's like, you know, are those things helping? Who knows? So there's, a lot of, there's a lot of back and forth here. Um, then there's another one here, 35 subjects with brittle nails, 22 showed clinical improvement of nail health uh, with biotin supplements. So I don't know, to me it's like, first of all, when it comes to brittle nails, make sure there's not an underlying medical problem uh, associated with it, but yeah. A lot of people develop acne on biotin supplements or their existing acne seems to flare. Um, I used to take biotin back in the day. When If you go back on my channel um, in the early days, I was like a big, big um, into taking biotin because you know, I was taught to recommend biotin for brittle nails. And so I didn't necessarily have brittle nails, but I was like, I'm just gonna try taking it. You know, it's safe, yada, yada. And so I was taking it and I did appreciate an improvement in my nails, but like I said, my nails weren't like a problem to begin with, but I did feel like my nails were growing faster and they were stronger. Well, hey guys, I'm here in Lowe's amidst the plants and it's a massive version of my mass cane <laughs> this one's huge I wonder if mine could grow this tall managed to keep it healthy for a couple of years now I have a little nice looking plants I already have the uh, red, white, and blue decor trickling out on Memorial Day. Cactus. Patriotic gnome, of course. These gnomes I have this one and then <laughs> the one with the little hat. He's cute. Kinda looks like Santa Claus. Bamboo and bonsais. I love that movie, The Orchid Thief, with Meryl Streep. Aren't these cute little bunnies? More orchids. Oh, well, hey guys, I just finished up a workout. Man, this top, I purchased, 
I'm gonna say a year ago at Target. It's like a waffle knit. I got it, you know, on clearance. I wear this thing all the time. It's so comfortable. You can wear it working out. It's a new day. A new day is actually really good quality. Anyway, I just finished up a workout. Um, <laughs> Anyway, before I went for a run, I was just jotting down some ideas for some videos and I want to do a chemical peel video for you all and it got me thinking, you know, if you were thinking of getting a chemical peel, they're actually, in my opinion, kind of underrated and they're, they can be beneficial for a wide array of things. Specifically, you know, superficial chemical peels, they're kind of like, you know, if you're patient with them, they can really yield results in terms of improving hyperpigmentation, acne. One thing to keep in mind is your skincare routine around getting a peel because you don't want to introduce a bunch of new products or ingredients in the weeks leading up to getting a peel. And ideally, you want to be really aggressive with your sun protection because uh, that just helps ward off post-peel uh, hyperpigmentation by calming down the little pigment cells and not giving them any fodder, if you will, to abnormally make pigment and lead to um, post-peel pigmentation. So sunscreen is really important for deeper skin tones. In fact, um, uh, the you know hydroquinone is often used uh, before the peel to prevent post-peel hyperpigmentation. Yeah, I wanted to do a video on peels, like uh, talking about all the di different depths of peels, like a phenol peel, which is really intense. <laughs> um, actually requires cardiac monitoring with the phenol peel. Um, in fact, I think I'm gonna film that. It should, in theory, if I actually do it, it should be up at this point. In which case, if that is of interest to you, go and watch it. Um, I have some, I have another video on how to get the best results from a chemical peel. Watch that one too. Um, because I give a lot of, of tips in that video about like what to do before, what, you know, what to avoid, what to do after, all sorts of things. Peels can also be really helpful if you have, um, enlarged pores from sun damage. I know a lot of you guys have asked about that, like, uh, sun, you, you know, with, with sun damage, what happens is it damages the supportive framework around the pore, so it dilates, and it makes for a prominent blackhead. And in fact, people who uh, got a lot of sun exposure throughout their lifetime and smoked, they have this very prominent type of um, sun-related uh, aging. It's called uh, fave rakashu. Uh, in dermatology, everything, lots of things are named after people. But chemical peels can actually be helpful for, for that. And uh, then, of course, you know, in the case of the superficial peel, you can also combine the peels with laser treatments um, for hyperpigmentation. With all of the jazzy innovations and like lasers and stuff, I mean, just a basic superficial chemical peel. Yeah, superficial chemical peels, I mean, slow and steady, you can actually get really good results. So I'm gonna do that. Like I said, it should be up at this point. All right, so last weekend I purchased that uh, L'Oreal Paris telescopic mascara. I'm wearing it right now. I'm wearing it now. I have not been that impressed. Honestly, I have just kind of found it a bit underwhelming. It's not that great. I much prefer I'm looking up because I'm looking at the viewfinder. I much prefer the Milani, the Milani Lash Extensions one I was using. That one was really good. But I think I'm gonna go back to the Maybelline Colossal because I'm never disappointed. All right, I am all showered up, moisturized. I just came on with the Gombon Pure to my body. And to my face, I actually, um, I purchased this a while back, the good old rice milk uh, moisturizing toner. Remember when I bought a few Korean skincare products that came in a few vlogs back? Um, I shared with y'all I bought the apricot collagen, apricot collagen youth firming cream from Goodall, and I also purchased this rice milk toner to try out and see, you know, kind of how it maybe compared to the I'm from rice toner, which I really like. Um, the re what inspired these purchases is because I've been so pleased with this good old vegan rice milk that I was like, I need to try some more from this brand. So far, kind of too hard to tell, but this is really a, like a hydrating toner. It's, it's, it's definitely a fluid in contrast 
to the Pyongkang Yule Deep Infusion Toner, which um, I'm, I'm almost finished with actually. In contrast to this, which has a, a little bit of um, viscosity to it, this is this is more of a, a liquid. It's got a little bit of grip to it, but not much. Um, well, you can see it's runny, runny, but very hydrating, kind of thing that's soothing to put on like after you shave as an after shave. So far, so good. I've actually actually used quite a bit of it, believe it or not. I've been putting it on my face and neck. It's good. I've, I've been liking it. Um, so I came on with that and then over it I did the rice milk moisturizing cream. So I'm making my way through this. Be, one thing I'm realizing, this packaging, you know, wonderful that it's like recyclable and all, but I hate it when packaging gets a crack like that because then, you know, air and stuff can get in. It's like eroding away, which is frustrating. Um, that happens too with some metal tubes. Like I have this elastoplast healing ointment. that's kind of like a European version of Aquaphor, if you will. Um, it's, it, well, at least it's distributed by Beersdorf, uh, Germany, or no, made in Germany, distributed in the UK. Anyway, um, this kind of metal packaging I've found over the years also can sometimes like, once you get down to the down to this part there can be like a little pinch here and it pinches it to a point where it creates some kind of pressure and it opens up anyway i'm just gonna put a little elastoplast on my eyelids why not speaking of which i i was sharing with you guys about how i'm planning to do a peels video which again may or may not be up but when you get a chemical peel um before applying the peel, your face is washed, and then after that, we take a, like an alcohol prep pad or acetone and use it to degrease the skin surface. And then, before proceeding with the peel, <laughs> actually just take plain petrolatum and protect like the eyelid area, the around this little the nasal alar groove area. Put some there, the nasal labial folds, and around the mouth. Because these are areas where the peeling agent reagents can collect and cause a lot of irritation for the patient. You can do the same thing though at home if you're using um, at-home exfoliants to protect those areas from that kind of irritation. Now, at-home exfoliants, they're going to just smooth out the stratum corneum, like super, super, super light peeling. Even, you know, people go on and on about the ordinaries. Um, ex liquid exfoliant, that red one, the AHA, BHA one, I mean, it's a good product. Um, but, I mean, even that is still pretty superficial. At-home peeling products really should just smooth out the stratum corneum, make it e more even. And they also, they also can help with exfoliating the pore. But you see, at-home products, it's kind of like, you know, the intensity kind of dictates the frequency. I always recommend with at-home exfoliants to pay attention to the instructions because a common mistake people make when it comes to glycolic acid exfoliating products is the product may be advertised as like, I don't know, we'll say 8% glycolic acid. So they may go and purchase another 8% gly glycolic acid product thinking it's going to perform the same. They can be entirely different. It's not the percentages may be identical, but the formulation overall really influences the free acid value and how it's going to affect your skin. Um, so that's a common pitfall. Like somebody might be like thinking that they're doing like an 8% glycolic acid at home exfoliant, plugging along with it, and then they're like, oh, I'm going to try this other product. And they proceed in the same way and they're like, whoa, this is like way more intense. So that's, that's definitely something that can happen. I don't personally you know use sometimes i do exfoliants um but i don't really do them that often because i like to keep my routine super simple and honestly if you're really consistent with your skincare routine um moisturizing uh cleansing and protecting your skin from the sun it really can kind of just overall support a more efficient uh turnover of the skin barrier because of the improvement in the moisture content now with age the skin becomes more prone to dryness and is kind of delayed at some of that turnover. You get retention. That's why you get rough skin texture. And that's a, a time where some people do find that it's helpful to incorporate alpha hydroxy acids into their routine. But it's a delicate balance because the skin is also a lot more prone to dryness with age. 
And so if you overdo it with the exfoliants, that can leave you really dry. The thing about tretinoin, which I'm going to put on now, the thing about retinoids is they kind of tell the cells how to behave better. Um, whereas hydroxy acids and things, they go in and dissolve the glue between the cells. You know, they're, they're like going in there and, and telling things to break apart. Um, so it's a different mechanism. Tretinoin is not really, you know, retinoids are not really exfoliants per se, but they do have the benefit of smoothing out the skin surface. So for a lot of people, the combination of a retinoid and uh, a and a hydroxy acid and exfoliant is too irritating for them, especially when starting retinoid for the first time. And you're getting, I'm gonna put a little here and here. You're getting a lot of, you're getting a lot of the irritation from the retinoid, the retinoid dermatitis. But it really depends too. One thing about the retinoid dermatitis that can make a difference too is the type of, the type of, in the case of tretinoin, the type of tretinoin that you're, you've been prescribed, like the retin-A micro is a lot less irritating. They came out with Altrino lotion, right? It was supposed to be allegedly uh, less irritating, less dry. Um, it has hyaluronic acid and collagen in it, which is pretty unique, actually. I'm going to rub my hands together. Pretty unique for a topical to have those ingredients because uh, the FDA is kind of specific about the uh, vehicles and things. I've said this before. Me personally, I love the cream, the tretinoin cream. I find that it spreads well on the skin. A lot of you guys commented that you feel the same way too. Um, check out my video on tretinoin cream versus gel. Uh, I break down the differences there. Anyway, y'all, I hope this video was entertaining. If you're new here, I vlog on the weekends. I just kind of take you around, chat with you, go about my day as normal, get errands done and things. Um, but I like to stay connected with you guys. And a lot of you really enjoy the vlogs. So a lot, actually, some of you only watch my vlogs. Um, but if you're not so into vlogs, then just pay attention. You know the title, I always title them vlog. So don't watch, don't watch the videos that are titled vlogs if this kind of thing is like not up your alley. Monday through Friday, I do dedicated skincare videos. So those will always be there. Um, and then the weekend, Saturday and Sunday's video is always a vlog of this kind of nature. Um, or, you know, if I'm traveling or something, I'll take you guys along. Now, I always weave in skincare or do my best to weave in skincare in these vlogs, but um, they're kind of a mishmash of just my day. This is actually how I started on YouTube and how a lot of you guys first found me was just through my vlogs and then, you know, people wanted more dedicated skincare. So I've just kept both on the channel over the years and, you know, I've gotten um, so much positive feedback from you all about doing it that way. Like a lot of you were like, I came here for the skincare information and now I just watch the vlogs or vice versa. You know, some of you came through the vlogs and then you've like found some of the skincare content to be really helpful. Um, so that's awesome. But if you're new and you're not like, so it, you're like, what the heck is this video? It's just like random stuff. Yeah, that's what the weekends are about here. <laughs> um, a, a video that's published on Saturday or Sunday, it's going to be just random stuff. Um, anyway, if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.